And so, the battle rages on against the pirate warrior. We are close to stabilising, however. And with Kronks about to see play, we're going to draw a fully invoked Galakrond. And you love to see it. Now our opponent has got one final push. They've got a few pirates in hand that they can play here. Will it be enough though to help our opponent seize back the advantage? Three pirates by the looks of things, but our weapon can kill the captain. Our crunks can get the value trade with the 5-6. And we have a fully invoked Galakrond, which will gain us a little bit of armour too. And I think our opponent can sense what's coming. Not going to give us an opportunity to play the Galakrond. I don't blame them. They choose death. Wise choice. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what deck am I playing today? This is Boltzmann's. I almost said Shudderwok. This is Boltzmann's Galakron, Bomb Warrior. Yes, Boltzmann is not just a Shaman expert or a Shudderwok expert. He can build other decks too, and he does a bloody good job with these other decks. And this is one such deck that he built to counter the meta that he was facing. And he's told me that um, he was farming Odd Paladin, which is an increasingly popular deck at the moment. He beat Pirate Warriors, he beat Galakron Shamans, and because of the bomb package, he was getting the edge, as he calls it, against Reno decks. And, in general, when you're looking at this deck, uh, against aggro, you stack armor. Uh, Skipper, Armorsmiths, and you're clear with Barov, pretty effective. Against Control-style opponents, you've got Bran, and a whole combination of various cards that synergize with Bran. Uh, Bran and Galakrond is your ultimate turn, as Boltzmann calls it. Um, Bran and the Scion of Ruin is an excellent play in terms of giving you massive tempo, especially when you've drawn the Scion of Ruin off of Galakrond. For combo decks and Reno decks, the bombs are especially amazing. Um, and they really do hurt the ability of the opponent to play Reno and Zephyrus in particular, which is awesome. Now, when I played this deck um, on the ladder, played three games, won three games. And one particular opponent I felt was worth showcasing. And that is the full game that you're about to see. I queued up against an odd warrior and initially I thought oh gosh can I win this do I have enough damage from my minions from my weapons from the bombs can I get through all of their armor particularly where they just keep tanking up so my opponent played a minion roped I thought okay uh, maybe they've got connection problems we'll give them a moment to come back into the game we went to their turn two, and what do we see? Tank up, hit face, and rope. Okay, maybe their connection problems are quite severe. Uh, surely they'll get back in by turn three. And so, we cleared the board, progressed to their turn, and lo and behold, they're thinking, tank up. Took a lot of thought that. Oh, and look, the rope. And at this point, I realised it's a bot. And so I tweeted about this. Uh, a friend on Twitter did forward my tweet on to one of the Hearthstone designers and said, uh, what is being done about players that rope like this, particularly odd warriors that rope? It'll be interesting to see what the response is, if there's any kind of penalty. Because this is clearly a bot. This is not somebody with connection problems. And at this juncture, I thought to myself, should I concede and move on? This is going to be a serious waste of my time. You know, I have got other things that I want to do. It's a Sunday evening. 
it's day one of the August season, and um, I'd quite like to enjoy the rest of my evening. And yet here I am, sitting through what will probably be a 20 plus minute game of Hearthstone. And nothing wrong with 20 minute games of Hearthstone by the way, providing they are productive 20 minute games. Not games where you're waiting for a rope to burn on every single turn because your opponent is a bot. However, I didn't concede. I became determined to see this game through because I was genuinely curious, could I still win this game? Would my opponent tanking up every turn, is that going to be enough for them? And I was genuinely curious. And so I persevered, we carried on. Still fearing this ability of my opponent to tank up, but that fear was nullified on this turn 7. Because in turn 7, after thinking about it, our opponent plays Dr. Boom Mad Genius. And they left that quite late. I mean, the rope had started burning when they played Dr. Boom. So what was the bot doing? Was the bot thinking? Putting extra thought or calculation into what it wanted to do? Anyway, their ability to tank up has been nullified here. And I found that interesting. Would you want to keep that tank up hero power live for a little bit longer? Use spells and other means to keep the board clear, but keep tanking up. Because that's your way of withstanding the bomb damage in particular and the pressure from my, my weapons and my minions. Was Dr. Boom on Curve the correct play? Yes, the Dr. Boom Hero Power does give you additional flexibility and more options to utilise, but was it the correct play? Boltzmann, if you're watching this, was, was that the correct play from the opponent? Now, their Colite Oracles have done some work for them here. Milled me of some cards. I wasn't expecting that. I'd completely forgotten that Colite Oracles get played in odd worry. But um, the cards that I milled weren't terribly consequential for me, which is great. And we are piling on the pressure here. One thing that I am conscious of is Brawl. And if you're a bot, how do you decide the right time to play a Brawl? Do you wait for a full board? Or do you add some additional subjective judgement to it? I mean, they've got Barov here, they don't need a Brawl. But it's interesting, like, when do you play Brawl? As a human player, do you wait for a full board? Do you wait for as long as you can possibly wait? Or do you see three minions on a board and think, yeah, I'll Brawl that. That just removes two minions, that's pretty good still. So how does a bot decide when to play Brawl? That's my question. Anyway, um, our opponent is nearly dead. And this turn, I wasn't entirely sure how to play it. So, I just rambled my way through it. Thought, hey, I can gain some armor here, why not? Not that I need armor against this opponent. But may as well gain it while we can, right? And the Scion of Ruin here will allow us to maintain a little bit of board presence. Meanwhile, Galakrond is waiting in the wings. He's ready to be played. Wow, the opponent actually manages to clear the board again. And armor up too! Unbelievable. Okay. Bran and Galakrond, that's the dream combo. But doesn't actually do very much for me here, right? Because, well, I've got through most of my deck. There isn't much else left to draw. 
So just the Galacrod on his own here is sufficient. But look, we get the Ziliax buff and the Armorsmith buffs. And here we push eight damage to the face. Mutanus, of course. The bot plays Mutanus. Absolutely hilarious. So, at this point, the game is over. I'm going to show off, though. I think I've earned the right to show off with a little bit of armor gain from my buffed up armor smiths. Look at those glorious buffs on those armor smiths. And. To the face we go with 31 armor. Oh, no, actually. 39 armor. Beautiful. And that was an incredibly satisfying win. Considering that this was a game where I was ready to concede and move on. I'm so happy that I stuck through with that game. 20 minutes later, yes. But... Very satisfied win. Now I had sped up my opponent's turns there because I didn't want all of you to suffer through the rope burning. But my original point from the start of the video still stands. This is a very, very satisfying deck to play. And as Boltzmann has indicated, you've got a range of good matchups in this meta. Now, earlier on at the start, I talked about facing um, Reno decks and combo decks. Whilst the bombs that you shuffle are still pretty good against those decks, um, Boltzmann would maintain that Reno and combo decks still aren't a great matchup. So I just thought I would put that out there for you, just in case your meta is infested with combo and Reno decks. Just something to be aware of. However, the deck does excel against aggressive opponents because of the armor that you can stack. And, you know, the plays that you can utilize with Bran in this deck are especially exciting, which can really help you against slower control style opponents. So, Thank you very much for joining me everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed my victory against the bot as much as I did, and I will see you all again very soon for more Hearthstone fun. By the time you see my next video, the new Hearthstone expansion will have arrived, and I'm especially excited for it, and you all probably know why. It's because I'm waiting to see what fun shenanigans we can do with the Shadowwalk. So stay tuned for more videos, but until next time, please stay safe, please look after yourselves, and as always, please be good to one another.